Hey kiddos. So this morning's in our morning meeting, we talked about finding the volume of items and you guys ran around your house to find some different items that we could find the volume for. So let's talk about now actually calculating the volume and to calculate volume, you're going to need to know the length, width and height of an item. So in our morning meeting, we talked about how to find length or what, how, what, what did we already know about length? So in this case, we found out that length is left to right we also said how long something is okay so and then height so length and height you're pretty great with so height is um, from top to bottom, bottom to top, feet to toe, head to toe, stuff like that. So let's put um, head to toe, top to bottom. And we also talked about that being how tall somebody is. So that kind of helps us relate this. So how tall are you? Okay. And width. So width is going to be new. So this is the newest part of, well, this is new. So in fourth grade, you did length times width. However, width is new in fifth grade because of where it's at. So really height is new, but I think what you're going to find is that you guys are used to seeing height as your old width. Now we're going to not change what width is, but we're going to talk about it a little bit differently. So width is how wide something is. So how wide something is. So the best thing I can tell you is from front to back. So front to back. So one thing um, to remember is that it's front to back. So let's go ahead and start dissecting these models down here, finding length, width, and height. So in this, we're going to use some different colors. So in my case, I'm going to color length in blue. I'm going to color width in green, and then I will color height in, let's say, red. You can do whatever colors you want, but let's be careful. Just keep your colors um, the same. So let's identify the length of all of our objects. So length moves from left to right. So the length of this rectangular prism made of cubic units is right here. Okay. The length of the tissue box is, again, if you look at the front of the item, it goes from left to to right. So this one's a little bit harder to color in. Okay, so again, look at the front of the item and move from left to right. So on this rectangular prism, if we look at the front face, we it's going to be from left to right. Now, this rectangular prism is always the challenge one. Now, the face of this rectangular prism, I'm going to color the face yellow. This is the face of the rectangular prism because that's what's actually facing you the way it's turned, okay? So that means, I'm going to write that this is the face. That means the length would be right here. So the length actually is 10 inches on this guy. Okay, so we have now identified the length. One thing you might want to do is recognize that you can find length on all of these items in multiple spots. So I'm going to go ahead and color in where else we can find length. So on our rectangular prism, our first rectangular prism made of unit cubes, length can be found at this blue line or even back here. Okay, so those all identify length. On our tissue box, it can be found at this co top corner. And unfortunately, the tissue's covering it up, but it could also be found back here if we were to, if that tissue wasn't there. On this rectangular prism, it is also found directly above our line we'd already colored in. Um, and then again, kind of in the back 
of this. Now, I bet somebody has already blurted this out, like Joshua Skipper probably already blurted this out, or Hogan's probably already blurted this out, or Zayna. These are making parallel lines. Hopefully somebody blurted that out, okay? So basically, the, all of the length lines are parallel to each other, which means they will never touch. Let's talk about width. Or let's actually skip to height because <clears throat> height is super easy to identify. Remember, height is how tall something is. So we can easily quickly find the height of our rectangular prisms because it is from top to bottom. So height, 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 and height. Now, height is found in many different spots. So I'm going to keep going. Height. Height, very cool. Another height, another height. So we can find height in all of these spots. And this is going to be important for our future lessons. Um, well, not just with height, but all of our measurements. Because when we start dissecting what we call compound or, or complex rectangular prisms, we're going to be identifying more than one because sometimes the measurements aren't going to be on the one that is just right there now especially in this sky so this line back here is also height this rectangular prism is actually um, see-through so we can see all of the lines whereas this one is a solid figure you guys cannot see what i just did i just realized so um this let me identify here this guy right here is see-through, okay? This guy over here on the left is not see-through. He's solid. So this teal one is solid. This white one or clear is see-through. Okay, so I think we identified height. So now we're going to talk about width. So this is going to be the new thing that will be probably the hardest part of this lesson. So obviously, if you can identify the length and the height class, you can easily now identify the width. So should the width be the first thing we go looking for? Absolutely not. So remember, width is front to back. I'm going to highlight this. Okay, so we're going to look at the front of the item and draw the line to the back of the item. So that is how we find width. Here's the width of the tissue box. This is going to be kind of harder to see on this tissue box, but um, I think if we can see it in one spot, we'll be able to match it in another. Width on our teal rectangular prism and width. You can't see it, but I, well, you kind of can see it. So I'm just basically coloring front to back, or basically I'm coloring all the lines that have not been colored in yet. So if you leave width to the last thing to find, you will be successful. Now, on this clear rectangular prism, the one on the bottom left, we might run into some problems, but I know you're super duper smart and we will not see that. So again, front to back. So here is, I'm erasing. Now I have to go back and fix. Uh-oh. Sorry, kiddos. Let me just fix this. And actually, why I'm fixing this, I realized I forgot to color this back length as well. Problem resolved. So now, with, again, think front to back. I know, I know, I know I colored this the wrong color. Very good. Okay. Front to back, so front to back, or the lines that are just left over, front to back, and front to back. So now we've identified length, width, and height of all of our rectangular prisms. So just a quick tip. Um, let's talk about this so we don't forget. Length, I would identify length first, then height, then with. Look for that for the third thing to look for. Okay, kiddos, now let's go practice together. 